Hey everyone, it's Lisa from Been There, Got Out. And today's guest is someone I met a few months ago. Then we um, got back together, but she is Dawn Hennessy. And she is a communications expert, among other things. That's the best label I could come up with. She is very energetic. She's another East Coaster. So uh, I have a feeling we'll be interrupting each other a lot during this conversation. But um, before I even get into what she does, Dawn, why don't you introduce yourself in a little more detail? Because we're going to be talking about something called DISC, which is sounds amazing, especially as it can relate to how to help us be better parents, especially during these very high conflict situations. Sure. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Super excited to talk about DISC with you all. Yeah. Um, yeah so my background, um, actually, I, uh, I've been working with communication strategy now for a number of years um, with teams, different types of teams whether it's in business or personal and um, using DISC as a strategy or a tool to help with communication is key, which is what brought me to you uh, when we yeah. talked about what you do and how you help your clients. And so uh, I'm really excited to explain what it is, how it works, uh, how it can benefit and um, answer all the questions you have. So yeah. thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to it. So one of the things that um, that I learned when learning about DISC, which again, Dawn, we'll get into in a couple of minutes, is how the golden rule is wrong. And as soon as I heard why, I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly, this exactly matches what it's like when dealing with a high conflict personality. So tell us, why is the golden rule not right? I lost you there for a second, Lisa. Okay. Okay. So, so why I'm, is the, apologize. That's okay. No, it's okay. So Dawn, why um, is the golden rule not right? Why is the golden rule so, wrong? Great question. So when we were growing up, all of us probably heard our mom say to us, you know, follow the golden rule, which yeah. is speak under the others the way you want to be spoken to. But the problem with that is that that's not actually accurate. If we do that, we're going to miss about 75% of the people out there because not everybody is the same. So really it's the platinum rule. It's speak unto others the way they want to be spoken to so that we can connect with them in a way that they understand and the way that they respond well, not the way that we want to be spoken to. So sorry to all the moms out there, even my own <laughs> at one point, uh, the golden rule is not really the way to go. It's the platinum rule. Yeah. And when you talk about that, what really resonates with me is how often we'll talk about negotiating with very difficult people. And I'm not thinking about our children in particular, but our exes and how we often project the way that we are, our own values onto someone else and think, well, I'm going to approach them the way that I would want to be approached. And it doesn't work. It's not logical. And so that's why I think this whole DISC method is important, not just in terms of how no. we communicate with kids, but in general, how we communicate with other people and getting into their mindset, understanding them better and, and behaving more appropriately to get, to get mm -hmm. to the goal. Yeah. We talk about that. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's adaptability. And that's what we'll talk about because to your point, whether it's a parent child relationship or it's your ex's relationship, if we can adapt to their style, we'll have much more success in communicating effectively because it's what resonates with them and it's what's going to make it easier to connect with that person. Uh-oh. Something happened with the recording. <laughs> it's yeah, it's been doing that. Yeah, it's this is like the third time and this is supposed to be better, but um Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh so tell us what is disc, Don? Tell us what so, you know Sure, sure. DISC is a communication assessment that has been used since the 1970s. Um, it was started, it was interesting. Um, basically, it was started on pen and paper. And so, as you can imagine, not as many people were able to take it. But once it went online, uh, millions of people have taken DISC. A lot of major corporations use DISC with help with hiring, with their sales teams, with managers, with um, their executive teams. It's all about how people communicate and how you can work effectively and efficiently together. Because again, 
the more we understand the way we all communicate, the more we can, I like to say, get along, if you will. So DISC uh, is an evaluation of behavioral styles. And the DISC is named the DISC because there's four styles that we talk about. There's the D, the I, the S, and the C. The D, uh, I'm going to go into each of them for you okay. so that you can expl- I can explain these different styles and it'll make sense as I go through it. But basically, we're not just one thing. We're not a D, we're not an I, we're not an S, we're not a C. We are definitely made up of more than one style. We all have these four styles within us in our communication, but we are predominantly usually one, if not two primary styles. So that being said, um, there are four styles. Like I said, the D, the I, S, and C. The D is the director or dominance. The I is the influencer. The S is your steady or stabilizer. And your C is your compliance. Um, So to give you a brief summary of each of the four styles, we'll start with the Ds. I love this. Um, Your Ds are very direct. They're very dominant. Um, They are very task-oriented. They are not people-oriented so much. They're usually leaders, um, and they just want to get the job done. So they aren't super friendly necessarily or warm and fuzzy, but they will get the job done. So if you have a child who's going to be a high D, they're going to go to work. They just know what they got to do. You tell them what to do. They're going to do it. Um, Now, when we talk about the different styles, there's ranges. When you do a DISC assessment, which takes about 15 to 20 minutes, uh, you get a score in each of these areas, anywhere between a zero to a hundred with 50 being kind of the energy line, which is kind of average. So if you, you can have a high D, which is someone who I just explained, and you have a very low D, your low Ds are going to be those that probably may not have as much drive. There might be the kiddos that you're like, I've asked you 15 times to clean up your room mm-hmm. and they don't do it. They just don't feel like it. Um, we've so been there. That's gonna be, oh yeah, we've all been there. Um, so those are very low D's typically. Um, in the grown up world, a high D is gonna be a boss, they're gonna own their own business, they're gonna be an entrepreneur, um, they're going to lead people. So the next level, next style is gonna be an I, those are your influencers, those are the kids that come home with the, the report card that says. Johnny is doing really well, but he can't stop talking to his neighbors. Uh, We all know those kids too, right? So (laughs) guilty as charged. Um, So yeah, um, high eyes are really sociable. They're outgoing. They're friendly. Um, Sometimes their heads are in the clouds. Uh, They're very optimistic. um, And they don't like to be told to come down. So with a high I, when we learn that we have a high I, we want to support them. We like to give them a little dose of reality in there, but we have to always remember that they're a high I and that if we burst their bubble, it will really hurt them. So high eyes are typically in the grown up world. They're going to be salespeople. They're going to be outgoing. They love to be the center of attention. Um, if you have a kiddo who's an I, I, like I said, they might talk a little too much in class. They're usually pretty popular though. People like them. Um, they like the spotlight on themselves. So they're fun to be around. High eyes, typically. Uh, we call them the life of the party. Also. Oh. Um, hmm. Yeah. So now remember, there's extremes, though. So your high, high eye at a 90 is going to look different than an eye at like a 60. So hmm. there, And then depending on what their other style is, it can balance them out. So I'll continue and I'll get into that a little more later. Your okay. next style is... And by the way, if you go into a high eyes bedroom, it may not look pretty because they're (laughs) not organized. They don't care to (laughs) make things look nice, but they um, know where their things are. In their mind, they know they they, pretty much not all the time, but Mm -hmm. they'll say, I know I have it. It's somewhere, but they might need a little time to get it and find it because Mm -hmm. it may not be as organized as we want. So as parents, high eyes can be a challenge because in our minds, they look like they're sloppy and they don't care about their work, but they do. It's just, they don't tend to keep it all together the way mm-hmm. that um, 
other styles do. Like and then a you D. have your, yeah, yeah. A D is definitely going to be more of your organized, straightforward kind of um, systematic, if you will. Um, remember those high D's? I said they're task oriented. They like to get things done. Your high I's are people oriented. Okay. Mm. But your D's and your I's are what we call fast paced. Okay. So oftentimes I and D go together. Interesting. Very often. Yeah. Because they're outgoing and driven. So they, that's the I, they're real outgoing. And then the D, they're real driven. So they tend to be, they're successful, um, but they have to be very aware of their own style so that they don't, um, again, we'll talk about adaptability. They don't come across either as a high D can be rude and high I can seem like they have severe ADD because they're so excited and interested about what they're talking about. They oftentimes struggle with stepping back and going, okay, wait, I should not talk now. I should listen. So <laughs> not always the easiest. Your S's are next. Your S's are steady. Um, your S's are those kids that um, they're just pretty easy going. Uh, you're lucky if you have an S. An S is a really a high S is great on a team, any team, whether it's your family, whether it's a sports team, whether it's a work team, a uh, married couple, uh, having a high S, they tend to stay real stable. High S's are slower paced. They are still people oriented. They like people. But unlike the I, when you meet a high I, they're going to be like, Lisa, I love meeting you. And they're going to be so excited the second they meet you. Your S's are going to take a little time. They're still going to like meeting you, but they're going to keep it under control. They're not going to be as emphatic. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be as openly excited. They might be, you know, they're warm, but they're not, um, they're not going to trust you the second they meet you like a high eye. So high eyes are very, very mm. trusting. Yeah. And S's are a little more guarded. So your S's, um, like I said, they're just really nice to have on a team because they'll keep the high eyes in check. They'll keep the high D's in check. Um, because if you don't have an S with you, your high D's will take everything over and try to get it done. Your high eyes won't stop talking. So an S is really nice. And then the last style is the C. Um, the C is the compliance. They are the rule followers. Um, sometimes in the uh, birth order, you ever read any of the books about birth order? They say that oldest child mm -hmm. is a rule follower. That's a C, a high C. Interesting. Um, they're I'm the, I'm the oldest. That I, so. All right. That's interesting. Um, and we still mm -hmm. haven't done your disc. We need to do your disc. I know. To find out what you Fascinating. are. Fascinating. Yeah, we'll do it. But um, <laughs> okay. when, um, but high C's uh, are very meticulous. They are, um, so I like to give the example of um, if you ever uh, give a, even, even a kid. So you give a kid a box of Legos. Let's say they're, you know, 11 years old. Okay. And you give one kid a box of Legos and they just start going at it, right? And you give the other kid a box of Legos and he pulls out the manual and looks at it step by step. That kid that did the step by step is probably your high C. And the one who didn't is not that's a high C. Not <laughs> Makes sense? That's Chris. That's not me. <laughs> that's Chris. Right. He takes out the manual. I hate reading instruction manuals. Right. He right. did. Yep. And that is... <laughs> We all know those people too. And um, they usually don't make as many mistakes as those of us who just try to figure it out on our own. But, you know, yeah. the high eyes will be like, mm, no, I got it. And high eyes tend to be low C's, <laughs> by the way. Um, and high C's are definitely low eyes. They don't go together. There are certain styles that go together quite often. You will not see an I and a C together. Like if you're, I've never seen an IC or a CI. Um, they don't, they don't wow. match, um, at all, uh, high C's. Um, I always like also the adult example of that is if you were going to buy a car and, um, you're selling to someone who's a high C, you know, when they come out with that contract and it's like, I don't know, 15 feet long, right. The high C will read it all and they'll check every line 
Uh huh. And the low C, you'll be like, that's fine. There, there you go. I like the number. My payment's this. I'm out the door. I'm good. So that's another uh-huh. indicator of a high C in an adult. And then in that child, like I said, uh, they're going to follow all that. Um, and they're the kids, like if they're in a report, they're going to read the directions, every sentence the teacher gave them in terms of step by step by step, what they want them to do. And your low C's will be like, mm, I'll wing it. You know, even at a young age, they'll figure out, I don't need to read all that. And they'll just go for it. They'll do it. So those are your four styles. Um, Interesting. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is used for mostly business, but how do you think we can apply this to parenting and communicating yeah. better with our kids? Because I think it's an excellent, like, I'm almost yeah. like, why even use it for business? It seems like a perfect yeah. thing, especially in, in our situation where our kids are, we, we need to, we need to really form these secure bonds with them. And I think communication is the way to do yeah. it. It is. And so you're right. Like it, it's interesting. Yeah. The business side of it, they use it all the time because we need to communicate with each other working as a team. We're a team, whether it's husband and wife, whether it's mother and child, whether it's father and child, um, it's a team. And so that's why DISC is so key. And I'll give you a perfect example um, with uh, my own kids doing their DISC when I first mm-hmm. started doing this. And um, I'm sure we all have, if you have more than one kid, we all know that they are very different. And the way we communicate mm-hmm. with each of them, if we do it the same, we know that it doesn't work the same. And that's why. Because if I say the same right. thing to all three of my kids in the same exact way, I'm going to get a different response out of all three of them. Because they're not the same. And their mm-hmm. style isn't the same. Their behavioral style isn't the same. So I, um, for my own example, using it with my own kiddo, you know, I've got a 17 year old son who, you know, you can bang heads because you ask over and over again to do something and it's not working. And I'm thinking why? And then I do the disc and I read it and I go, that's why, because I'm asking the complete wrong way. I'm not communicating with him in the way that is going to motivate him. It's going to meet his needs. And me recognizing that was huge. Because all of a sudden, instead of saying to him, can you do this, 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 and this, my report came back and said, don't do that. Not for this one. This one, you need to ask him to do one thing. You need to ask him to do one thing and give him uh, him the option to choose when it would be done by so that he was in complete agreement and it was his buy-in because he wasn't going to do what I wanted him to do because I wanted it. He was going to do it because he decided and that was his strength. That's his will. And in DISC, what's so awesome is it tells us like what to do and what not to do with our kids. So when you get a profile, yeah, go ahead. What was, sorry. One thing you just said, I want to make sure I remember this is that for the audience that we are dealing with people who are stuck in these very high conflict situations, whether it's divorce, co-parenting, custody stuff. A lot of times the kids feel like they have no agency. They don't have control over everything. So what you're saying where the kid, it's not like you're forcing the kid to do something. You get them to want to do it themselves. I think is really, really important, especially for kids in these, in these cases that are listening to this now. I would agree because we know that obviously you're the expert in this, but they're going through it. The kids are going through it. You know, the parents are going through it. The kids are going through it. And if there's anything we can do to help that child be heard and understood and spoken to in a way that's going to help them is a win. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah, where I, sure. I know that that's where DISC can be so valuable because if I can hand you as mom a list of seven things do this, don't do that. And we just know, Mm -hmm. do this and don't do that when you're dealing with this child. Then we know that we've got a much better chance of being successful, especially at maintaining and this relationship and keeping it more positive because there's so Mm -hmm. much negativity involved in their world that if all of a sudden that kid goes, my mom gets me, wait, my mom is talking my language. 
my mom is like, that's such a positive for that child. Right. Well, they, where they feel heard and they feel like their yeah. feelings are being considered. Right. Right. And, and not yeah. to take away from anything else because therapy is wonderful. But the, the one thing about DISC that is so different is it's black and white. It is on paper. And when these mm-hmm. kiddos, if they take it, and I do want to say that they should be this, this age, just so we're on the same page, about 12 years old, um, that they mm-hmm. can take the DISC. And the reason is, is the vocabulary. If you have a genius child at nine or 10, go for it. But I, the vocabulary level mm-hmm. is probably about 12, 11 or 12. Um, where you'll and get how a really long does it good take accuracy. To... Oh, what? sorry, John. How long does it take for someone to, to take the disc, to do the test? Yeah. About 20, 25 minutes, maybe for a younger kiddo, maybe 30 at that. And, and then, then the I, results I just are thought of something. You get a full okay. 50 page report, um, printed out. I saw. Like, yeah. That's yeah, it is. Um, so so and, another thing yeah. is, it's like a t- tw- 20 to 25 minutes. Is it kind of like, I imagine, people love taking personality tests because as yeah. they t- do the questions, they learn about themselves. Is it that yes. kind of thing where it's like once someone, a kid starts taking them, they would be like, oh, this is kind of interesting. Or do you think a lot of kids ref- would refuse to take it? Because to me, it sounds kind of fun. No, they love it. I mean, it's, obviously you have to know your child too. Um, Mm -hmm. if your child's got to be open to, Hey, we're going to take this test. It's a quiz. It's not no grade, no right or wrong answers here, but it's going to really help, um, understand you, you understand yourself, um, at that age for them to get a sense of their behavioral style is huge Mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't get that until they're way into their adulthood. And the lessons you can take from it are pretty significant. Yeah. Yeah. That's why yeah. when you told me about it, I thought this is, this is perfect. This is perfect yeah. for parents and kids. So talk a little bit about assessment. Like how does that work? And what are the two different versions of assessment? Sure. So when we do a disc, um, you actually get a, this very long report, but you actually get two different um, results, if you will in terms of your style, there's a natural and an adapted style. So, and they can be uh, very similar. They can be very different, Um, but it depends on that person and how they answer the questions uh, throughout the assessment. But basically your natural style is gonna be that way that child is when they're just playing with their friends, hanging out, having a good time, whether it's they're just watching a movie or they're at the park playing or they're, um, you know, relaxed. If they're, relaxed. Yeah, no stress, really okay. no stress involved. Okay. They're adapted is what happens to them when they are put under stress, but it may not be a negative stress. It can just be something expected of them. So your natural mm-hmm. style may not be the same as your adapted style, let's say in school. And I know we all have those kids, right? That you've seen them, you know, they're very different at school than they are at home. And you're like, hmm. Always. Right? <laughs> hmm. um, or sometimes you'll see the kid who, you know, at home, they act, and we see this all the time. They act a certain way. You'll hear people say, oh, that's because they feel safe there. Right? But if you see mm-hmm. that's going to be yeah. their natural, if you see how they adapt, what do they do when they're in that other environment? And is there a big swing and why? Because let's say, for example, that's, that's who you're you have talking a kiddo, to now. Right, exactly. So let's say you have a kiddo who is, um, their natural is a very high eye. They're super outgoing. They're really friendly. That's their natural. But then we get their adapted style and it drops significantly. That's something to be looking at because why would that child feel the need to totally not be themselves Mm. in this other environment, right? Something is keeping them from feeling either safe or uncomfortable or not natural. And when we see a big difference between like, let's just say we'll stick with that eye for a minute. Let's say we see like a big swing in their scores that is stressful to somebody, whether you're 12 years old, whether you're 30 years old or you're 60 years old, because it's 
being someone you're not. When you're a natural is one way. Mm. But your adapted changes so much, then something's not natural for you in that other environment. Does that make sense? This is, this. Yeah, well, um, I was saying this is the audience you're speaking to now. Because often the kid has to, the kid is very different in the different households. They're going yes. back and forth between two parents because yes. our people are often in high conflict situations. There's one that yeah. tends to be an abusive uh, type and one who tends to be more of the um, survivor. And so the, the, the survivors tend to be more of our clients. And they're like, I'm so worried about my kid having to go yeah. over there. Like, what can I do about it? Because we as parents can't keep them from going and we can't control somebody else's behavior. So right. do you think that this can be helpful or how, how can it be helpful to us as parents to maybe work with our kids for when they are not with us, but in stressful right. situations? Right. Well, I think that looking at, again, the report, and I know you've seen it, it's very in depth, but mm -hmm. that's part of, yeah. so what I do is once we do an assessment like that, then we do a debrief and we talk it through. And that's where we would say, okay, Lisa. So what we see is that this child is this way in their natural environment, and then they are this way in their adopted environment. So there's actually recommendations on how to help that child in the situation mm -hmm. either way. So if it's natural and they're being themselves and they're at home with one parent and we go, okay, so this is going to help with that. Then we see them shift, let's just say, and we see more of that behavior with another parent, then we can go, okay, how do we bring them back? How do we get them more comfortable to be more in their natural state? So that could help mm -hmm. other parent it, to, to identify this is not natural for this child. And this is how I can help. So the mm. DIS report actually will give us all that information um, in terms That's of great. how best to communicate again, what to do, what not to do, um, even what motivates a child, you know, because we're all motivated by different things. So does that yeah. help? Okay. So Don, you were talking about the um, adaptability though. So how, yeah. how, how does that affect everything? Sure. So the first part of DISC is to understand ourselves. So if you look at any relationship, but it was in this situation, a parent to child, um, the parent has to understand themselves as well. Mm. So when we do DISC, it's not just about the child. It's about us as parents as well to understand our own style. Because if I know that I'm a high I D and I've got a child who's an S C that's completely opposite. So if you've ever heard of a parent that go, I just don't know why I can't get through this kid. We butt heads constantly. Yeah. Most likely, because I have one of those, it's because I'm an ID and that child's an SC. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I know, okay, this is who I am and this is how I tick. Now this is who they are and it's how they tick. Now I've got to change because I'm a parent here and I need to get the best and do the best for my child. So if you're my child and I now understand DISC and I know this is so not my style, but I know how to adapt to your style because I know who you are now. And I, it's like a little, I would say like, it's a little uh, peek into the brain. Like I got, I got a little, I got a little way in to go, ah, okay, I got this. And so now all of a sudden um, I can change the way I act and the way I communicate to that child so that it works. It's going back to that platinum rule. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's excellent, especially because, like I said, a lot of times kids don't have agency in these situations. They don't have control right. over so much. And we as parents also stuck in this don't have control over a lot of things. So I love how you said right. this is something that we do have control over. We can work on changing ourselves with knowledge yeah. like that. That's the whole point yeah. to me about education is like, what can we learn to do better? So right. we can control when we know what we're supposed to do. Yeah. It's just that to me... It's just, it's a, a very valuable resource mm -hmm. for a parent to um, get their child. Yeah. Get them. And then learn how to change 
And I, you know, we always say like, you can't really change people, that kind of thing. But when it comes to parenting, we all know that that's constantly changing in terms of how we are working so hard to uh, improve our relationship with the children. Right. And kids ages, everything changes. It's different how you parent a two-year-old versus a 12-year-old. Yeah. So we always have to adjust. Yeah. And, 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 you know, just being a teenager without high conflict is hard enough to parent. Right. right? So it's like a, it's, it's like tenfold Mm -hmm. when they're going through this and then you can't communicate because they're teenagers, even then, you know, uh, in a non-conflict situation. Right. And on top of parenting a very difficult teenager and, um, I, I think I told you, Don, this, I used to teach high school. So I know not just with my own kids, but from a lot of teenagers, they, they are very, yeah. very difficult, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it's hard. That's hard enough. But also when you have an adversarial parent, that's counter parenting to what you're doing. So right. instead of an ally, you're dealing with the right. teenager who's an adversary sometimes and another authority figure. Right. Right. It hard. You can so make it easier. One little aspect, right? Just that little yeah, I it. think it's a big aspect. Yeah. So that's why I love yeah. it. So Don, talk yeah. about now how how people can find you and what you can do for them. So um, I will obviously share um, my information with you to get mm-hmm. that out. Yeah. Um, and um, basically, what I do, like I said, is I can um, provide more of this education uh, and then uh, administer a disc. Um, it's very simple. It's an email uh, link. Uh, they take the assessment. As I said, the report comes back immediately as soon as they're done. Um, you get a copy of the report. Um, as I said, I highly encourage, you know, you can do it for your kiddo, but if you don't do it for yourself, it, it, you won't get the same benefit to find out how different you are. Or so it's almost like you, you do it be. for yourself first. It's best to know yourself first. I would. Yeah. And then when, but with these kiddos, um, doing it for yourself and doing it for them is going to be the best uh, formula for success because yeah. you got to know yourself, you got to know them. And then the work, there's work. Um, and so right. what I do is you give the assessment and then after the assessment, we do like a 30 minute kind of debrief call um, with the parent, uh, depending on the age of the child, depending on the circumstance, the child wants to be on there, that's fine. Um, if they don't, that's okay. It's really to help mom or dad uh, be more successful in their communicating with that child. So we go over the do's, the don'ts, um, their strengths, their weaknesses, what motivates them, what they need um, to be successful. It's not, you know, everyone's different. Um, so it's very individualized. So we do that debrief together. And then there's, um, I call it my homework, where mm-hmm. we talk through, okay, these are the strategies that you can use to start to implement in your day-to-day life with that child to help them. Oh, I love it. I love it. I can't wait to get Thanks. started. And I can't wait, wait to hear what happens when people get in touch and start experimenting yeah. with the disc. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be exciting. Yeah. Yes. Looking forward to helping a lot of people. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. I know the value. Thank you so much, Don, for, for coming on and um, getting this out there. I, I'm fascinated it. by it, especially because I think it's a business approach that could really work well with parenting. And like you said, mm-hmm. it's a team. A family is a team. Yeah. We are a team. Very true. Well, thank you for having me on here. My this was pleasure. Really fun. I look All forward right. to talking soon. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Bye.